Greetings, my name is John McIntosh. Um, I'm a community liaison person for Life Unlimited in the Waikato. I've been with the Life Unlimited for now approximately 15, 16 years in various positions um, from senior management through to my current part-time role of uh, community liaison. I've been helping to conduct these um, disability start programs um, in this organization and in my previous employment with Workbridge um, because I think it's important that we all um, have some background knowledge on disability, how to work with disabled people and how to interact and get the most out of the benefits of uh, our association with disabled people. So we're going to go through a series of modules and uh, the first one is uh, the timeline of disability or the history of disability in the world and in New Zealand. So this is a quick, very quick snapshot. And um, we will go through that now. And excuse me for having to refer to some notes here. Um, so we, let's talk first of all about a period of time back in the 1880s. Um, back then, the needs of disabled people were pretty well ignored due to superstition and guilt. So in those days, the first schools for the deaf opened up in uh, 1880, and the first school for blind children opened in 1891. The language back there, of course, was totally different. And um, they decided in those early days, back in the late 1880s, is to institutionalize people with disabilities. They thought then that there would be a great place for all people, mainly children, but adults as well, with disabilities to be put away in an institution where they could be normalized. So normalized and protected. So it became, in a way, a bit like a custodial affair where uh, they, they were put away, out of sight, into institutions and, um, I guess, forgotten about. By the time we got through to the 1930s, things were starting to change. The voice of disabled people was starting to happen a little bit. And so you had things like the New Zealand Crippled Children's Society, now known as CCS Disability Action. Um, to, they came along and IHC was established back in the uh, late 40s. So there was people were then starting to get a more of a knowledge of disability. Then I guess the next step would be to talk about the 1950s. So we were still very marginalised. People like me who are disabled were marginalised. And if I could possibly relate to some of my early days in, in New Zealand, I was born in Lower Hutt, near Wellington. And um, I was... Uh, in those days, there were no special schools for disabled people, disabled children. So um, my parents took me to a specialist who at that stage said, OK, you give me your son and I'll put him in an institution. He'll be there till he's 18. Then you can come and have him after that. <laughs> 